So with it apart, the way to check the integrity of the bearing is um, look at this shiny surface here under a magnifying glass and turn it round and see if there's any pitting in there at all. If there are any little indents or anything like that, it's like a pothole in the road. And the more, um, and you see the shiny ring here, that's where the bearings run. It's like a pothole in the road. So what happens is as a bearing goes through a piece, if it's damaged, if there's a piece of corrosion, or if there's a pitting there, like a pothole with a wheel, as a tyre goes through a pothole, it keeps hammering away at the pothole and basically makes the hole bigger. And that's what a bearing does. The, the ball going through the divot in the, in the chromium or steel uh, race that it runs in, will the ball will just hammer that dent out more and more and more. And of course, the humming that you hear, that kind of mm noise, is that ball going through those divots thousands of times a second, depending on the RPM, obviously, that it runs at. So that is, if you check the integrity of your bearing like that, make sure there's no pitting in there and on the piece on the inside, and also the balls as well, that they're good, then, you know, your bearing's probably in pretty good shape. So having done that, make sure that all your pieces are clean. And the way that this goes together is this is the front uh, this piece is facing forward, so as you look at the tensioner bearing, that's what you see. That's the front face, that's the back face that's on the table. The inner uh, race points up at you like a crown, okay? And then the piece uh, that holds, that goes in the centre, uh, basically, we'll come to this piece later, but the piece that goes in the centre, that's tapered. So it's tapered like my fingers are, it's tapered that way, like that. Okay, so that you can press into the balls. So the bit I'm holding is thicker that end and thinner that end, and that's you've got to press that into the balls that way, okay? Now I put a red mark on it to make it easy for you to see that ultimately when it goes together, it's gonna to face us like that, if that makes sense, okay? So the way to do it is I'm now turning this upside down I'm turning the race that way, okay? And the whole thing is gonna to go together like that with the balls in, okay? So that's how it goes together like that. So what you do is you pack this full of grease. Obviously you wanna make sure this is clean. You don't want any grit in there or anything like that. Otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. And I'm just using ordinary kind of, um, Axle grease. Um, it's a general multi purpose grease. Um, okay, so you lay your race in there and then you pick up your little balls, and there's 14 of them on this one. Someone was obviously superstitious and didn't do a 13. Whoops, you drop one, doesn't matter. I just get, I've got a, a few more. Um, like I say, you might wonder, you might say, well, I'm just going to go and buy a new one of these. Uh, what, there's no need for me to go to all this trouble. When I change my cam belts, I change the race as well. And that's fair enough. You know, you might want to change your tensioner bearing when you, when you do your cam belts. But if you're only doing, I mean, I would do that because I'm doing high mileage. But if you're only doing, uh, you know, 5,000 miles in five years or 3,000 miles in five years, I suspect quite a lot of people do very low mileage. This tensioner bearings are not going to go bad. They don't go bad just by sitting there. Cam belts are made of rubber. They perish, arguably. I think it's a little bit overstated, this, this timing thing of you know, three years and then they've had it. I don't agree with that, but there you go. Some people obviously don't agree with it because they go five years and then they, they change them, not three. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a money-making exercise for Ferrari. Um, but, um, you know, so if, you, if you're not doing many miles, 3,000 miles, 5,000 miles, these, there's no way that this bearing is going to be uh, expired. You know, it's going to be perfectly all right. And, you know, in the, in the grand scheme of things, I suppose, a couple a hundred quid or so, whatever it costs for new bearings, it's not a lot. But then why replace something if you don't need to? There's no, there's no point doing it. It's just a waste of money. 
So you can see I've got all my balls in there. I'm just going to put a little bit more grease around. Um, don't worry about overpacking it because it will squidge out what it doesn't need. Um, obviously some things, when the grease can't escape, you mustn't overpack. Uh, and you mustn't overpack because you can actually cause uh, a build up of uh, heat. You know, if there's too much grease in there, it can uh, generate heat. Um, kind of like a hydraulicking, I think. I don't know too much about the dynamics of it. I've just told, you know, don't overpack bearings by the old boy that sort of taught me years ago. So, um, yeah. Right. Um, I'll just finish off here. I'm just making sure it's even. It doesn't matter because they're all going to spin around anyway. Okay, so there are the balls in there. Now this is, again, you can pack a little bit around the edge of here. Okay, and there we go. Now the trick is that you push these bearings up from the rear and they will splay out. So as I push them up, I don't know if you can see that, as I push them up they will splay out a bit and allow this tapered one to push in. So it's a little bit of juggling. I tend to put it in at an angle and I push the others up and it's hardly any pressure at all. You just let the, the center do the um, move, the center will move these other bearing, little ball bearings out the way. It kind of just spreads the crown out as it were. Um, I'm trying to do it and there you go, right, it's gone in there and then you just, all your fingers feel it around the back of it. You don't want to break that crown, your race, in other words, the, the, the brown thing. Okay, there you go, it's in. And there you go, it's in. Okay, then what you do is having done that, you get your dust shield and your, your dust shield goes in the top there. Now the dust shield is a piece of metal and it's got rubber bonded to it on the other side. So in fact, the black ring you see is a, like a windscreen wiper. It's flexible there, if you can see, but it's actually flexible. Obviously you want to check that it hasn't got any nicks in it or anything like that, otherwise the grease will leak out and go on your cam belt. And that cover just simply goes in at an angle and it just pushes in and that's it. And you just run your thumb round like that and it's in, okay? And it's as simple as that. And the sound the bearing should make is it should be quiet. So when you spin it, it shouldn't have any notchiness and it shouldn't make a noise. The other thing is it shouldn't go ch if it spins like that, it's got no grease in it and it's probably, well, it will have absolutely had it. So if it makes that kind of noise, it's no good. You've got to throw it away. Sometimes it will just spin, but not make a noise. That means it's not got any grease in it. So bearings tend to go through a couple of stages. What happens is they run quiet like that when they've got grease packed in them. Then they run freely without any resistance at all. That's when the grease is kind of expiring. And then the next stage, of course, it's metal to metal. They're not lubricated anymore, so then the bearings themselves give up. And um, then they've had it. There's no bringing them back. But bearings, if you catch packing them with grease, would last for years. And this sealed bearings that we have now, um, you know, sealed for life, I think they call it. Well, it's sealed for life because uh, <laughs> when it's run out of grease, its life's up. But in fact, if you took them apart, they would last probably 10 times as long. You know, I mean, uh, as long as they're lubricated, they last a hell of a long time. Um, so the really the thing that puts a life on them is the fact that you, um, you know, don't pack them with grease. Uh, we don't tend to bother, do we? Okay, so that's one side done. So now I'm just going to do the other side. I won't bore you with that because it's the same process, okay? Okay, guys, so to save a little bit of time, I've already packed these in. So now we're looking at the rear of the bearing. Uh, the other thing I should say is that you do the front first and then you do the rear um, that way uh, because it, um, it's designed to come apart that way. You know, it's, it's uh, it, and you'll see in a minute, the back presses in more readily than if you did it the other way around. It's just the way it's machined. So again, we'll put grease on our inner bearing here it's sort of like a key, um, Chinese puzzle really 
where it goes together in a particular way. It's not difficult though, it's like one of those wooden things you get at Christmas. Okay, so again, you're going to have to pull the crown up towards, pull the inner race up towards you, and that allows the balls to spread out a bit. Um, might be that I won't be able to do that. <laughs> Hold on a second, dropped a ball. It's difficult to do this and show you at the same time. I'm trying to look over, look up on the monitor to see if I'm actually getting this in shot. Yeah, okay, so what I've got to do is pull the race out and I, I'm going to stop it there and show you what I mean. I'm going to get a little screwdriver because I'm covered in grease and uh, <laughs> I need to be able to show you what it is that I mean. So I've got a little screwdriver here and I'm just going to pull the race up like that so it just splays out a little bit. You see, so it's just at an angle. Then I can get my centre. Okay, so you can see it's at an angle. I get my centre and then I can push it in. And oh, it is a little bit fiddly now because it's it's actually harder to do this side than it is the other. Okay, I'm pulling the race out quite a lot now. Okay. And then it's just like I say, it's sort of like a Chinese puzzle. It kind of goes in and then locks in. There you go. Okay. Like that. So now they're all in. Like that. I think I was in frame when I did that. Then the gas cover goes on exactly the same as before. Okay. And you just press it in and run your thumb around and it locks it in. There's like a little retaining uh, machined out kind of slot that it goes into. And there you go, that is nice. There we go. And then finally, the last thing is that little kind of uh, front spacer thing that goes on the front uh, and then that pushes on to the tensioner and then the bolt goes on the front. So one final thing, uh, I'm just trying to remember things to say, one final thing to bear in mind, when you actually put these on, um, if you uh, have to push this on the shaft and it doesn't want to go, don't hit it from the outside, because if you hit it from the outside, it'll all come apart. Get a socket and press it on from the inside. So if the shaft goes through it like that, you press there, don't press there. Um, otherwise, like I say, otherwise it will all come apart. So that's another thing. But it should just drop straight on. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, so there you go. Okay, folks, so your tensioner um, is this assembly here. So basically that bolt comes out and then your bearing comes off. And then you've got this um, tensioner thing here, which basically has a piston and a spring in it and you can see it moves like this if I do that you can see it moves it comes apart by you just squeeze it from the top there and swing the bottom out you'll see it's there's a lug that locates it so you just press it I'm trying to do it so you can see it but you press it <laughs> I'm trying to do it one hand hold on a second you press it pull the bottom out and it comes out of that lug there you see and then when you release it out comes that piece comes off sorry that piece comes off you got a piston thing in there and a spring okay um, I'm just gonna zoom out a bit so you can see it in uh, more of its glory so when you're doing the barrel method for tightening your cam belts or actually thinking about it even the Ferrari method for tightening your cam belts um, my only reservation about that is this spring you know, because it's all dependent on that spring really um, now that spring's 30 years old um, and it's been fully compressed for most of all of its life so you know you could end up with potentially the kind of the wrong cam belt tension if that spring wasn't up to snuff now, I'm not saying you replace the spring. What I'm saying is that the method that they use now, which is with a clavis gauge, which basically you know you twang the belt and you do it by the sound of the belt, uh, and it comes up as a readout. That that to me seems to be the more accurate method of doing it. 
Um, but anyway, you know, each to their own. You can use the Vero method, the Ferrari method, and you can twang the belt, and then that way you've got to be pretty much certain that you've got it right. Anyway, so basically, uh, there's a little uh, bleed hole here, so that when you put loads of grease in there, it all squirts out of there. I can remember that from doing a 308, my, uh, my brother and I's 308, 20 years ago. So, um, I'm going to... I've actually cleaned this up, which is why there's no grease in here, so I've cleaned it all up. So, um, I'm going to put a load of grease in there, mainly because that stops that spring from corroding. Um, seeing as, you know, water and God knows what seems to get in the Ferrari engine bay, um, you know, from underneath. Uh, so just put a lot of grease on. You can't go too much with this, it's fine. And, um, and then just put it back together. That's all there is to it, really. There's nothing much more to it than that. You'll see it will splurge out when I, um, when I close the thing down. But... Um, yeah, go for it. Just go for it with the grease. It's okay. Can't have too much of a good thing. Um, okay, and that is that. Uh, oh, I really have got it everywhere. So that little piston goes on there. Right, so the only reason for doing this, it doesn't move or anything like that. It's not like it's constantly telescoping or anything. Um, but you know, obviously water could probably get in there. I can't remember which way it orientates, but you know, if water got in there, it would rust it solid. Not that that's a problem either, because remember, this spring doesn't actually give the belt tension at all. It's actually locked off. You only use this spring as a means of tensioning the belt when you've unlocked uh, the tensioner nut. Um, so that's the only time you're reliant on that spring. Um, and like I say, all of its life, it stays, it stays compressed. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to pop that back, whoop, wrong way round, pop that back in, like that. It might seem odd that I'm do <laughs> what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at the monitor and do it at the same time <laughs> to check I'm in frame. But anyway, that clicks onto there like that and you see it all wheeze out the hole uh, when you squeeze it like that sort of thing. You do that, it's going to come out the hole, which is good. Hold on a second, it's so greasy now, I can hardly hold it. There you go, there it comes, like that. <laughs> I remember doing that all that time ago. Right, there you go, so it's ready to go. Now you could actually, if you wanted to, to save yourself a lot of grief, and actually replace, put the tensioner on here. You know, there's no reason why you shouldn't. So you just um, pop it on. Now, it's... Quite a tight fit, obviously, because it doesn't want to. So sometimes it, you're going to need to tap it, perhaps in the center. Okay, so I'm going to get a socket and tap it on. You mustn't tap it from the edge, otherwise it'll all fly apart. Um, so uh, we get a socket and we just tap it in from the center. I'll just go and get one. So here we have a socket that is the same size as the center of that. I'll just zoom in so you can see. So it's just the same size as centre as that. And you won't, you know, you won't have to hit it that hard. Unfortunately, this table bounces up and down like you wouldn't believe. So it's not going to be very easy to do it on this table. You just have to take my word for it. You hit the socket and the socket hits the centre and it goes on. But I can't do it on this table because it's just rubbish. Okay, so it's on. So just so you know, you don't uh, drift it all the way until this comes level with the top like you would might be trying to do because obviously it wouldn't clear at the back. And the reason why it's recessed is because you've got that that goes in there, you see? So then everything is hunky-dory. So just don't try and drift it all the way through because you won't be able to. You'll be hammering away, wondering why it's sticking. Okay, and then just to secure it, we'll squeeze it and line the hole up, you see? So as I squeeze the tensioner, line the hole up like, that and then get the bolt in and then I pop the bolt in so and then it's ready to go on the car and that's it and there you have it guys a nicely serviced tensioner and uh, tensioner pulley and that's it thanks for watching